Hi everyone. Today we are going to talk about debouncing and how you could use a debounce function to delay your API calls. Uh, this is a very popular question that is being asked in technical interview rounds these days. And it's a popular concept that is also asked in many interviews. So let's talk about what debouncing is. Now you must be familiar with many e-commerce sites that have search features. So what generally happens is when you start typing on those search bars, the API calls are not made instantly. These API calls are only made when you stop typing for a certain duration of time. And that specific phenomena is called debouncing. So what we are essentially doing is we are uh, delaying the API calls to the server uh, at least when the user stops typing for some duration of time, let's say 300 milliseconds. So that is what this question is talking about. It's a fairly popular problem, which is being asked in many technical interviews these days. And it tests your core JavaScript knowledge. And if you have knowledge around callbacks and set timeouts and asynchronous programming in general. So let's go ahead and start implementing debouncing. But before that, let's have a demo of what the application would look like. So we have this preview here. So basically what we are trying to do here is we are trying to fetch countries a list of countries as and when the user stops typing for at least one second. So if I type here, let's say IND and it will wait for one second and then it will fetch results, which are these. So this is what we are going to build. This is also called an autocomplete feature or auto populate feature. It gives you suggestion based on your type. So let's say if I type United, so then I'll get results of that particular uh, keyword that it matches. So we are going to use an API for this and let's see how we can use it and how we can build this uh, whole component in React. But before that, let's go to Tailwind CSS and copy the CDN link and I'll be using Tailwind for styling. So let's quickly go to the play website and we have the CDN script here. And what I'll do is I'll go to index.html and paste the styles. Also, what I'll do is I'll hide this panel for now. So let's start with the coding. Uh, I'll go ahead and remove all the boilerplate code. So let's start with the styling first and creating our component. Um, what I'll do is I'll declare the outer div as full height. That will be full viewport height. And we'll go ahead from there. Let's say class name equals to VG gradient to bottom right from blue 500 to purple 500. And add screen. So yeah, uh, this is all Tailwind. Uh, this is completely unnecessary for this problem, but let's have it for styling. Now we have our component, we'll start creating our component here. So we already have the boilerplate on algo chunks. We'll, we'll, we'll basically pick it up from there and start coding. Uh, let's say we have a nicely padded area. So we have padding four and height is full. That's great. We'll have our H1 tag, which says search countries okay we can style it up as well font is bold text is white makes sense okay now we'll have our input component here which will be our countries component and this is important because uh, this will be eventually debounced the value of this will be debounced so on, on every keystroke we are going to call an API so for that, we need to debounce it. So that is the main component that we are going to deal with here. So it will be type equals to text. And we'll have a placeholder of enter, let's say country name. And we'll also give it a bit styling. It's a rounded as MD, P is four, max width is M O sim, I mean small, width is full. Uh, rounded okay that works yeah so we have our input component now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and create our state for that and for that we're going to use the react hook called use state and we'll call it let's say search text so const search text set search text and it will be empty initially also we're going to import it so now we have our component, let's hook up to the value. Value will be search text. Now we need to bind our on change handlers in such a way that as and when the value inside the input changes, the state gets updated. So for that, we'll have our on change handler and we'll have the event 
here and we'll set it to set search text e dot target dot value so essentially we should get our search text so if we try to print our search text it search text it will be search now so we are getting the state down below cool so now what we need to do is we need to call the api as and when this search text changes so to cater that we can have a use effect hook and i'll also have the boilerplate okay didn't get it so as and when the search text changes we need to call the api and also first we'll check if search text is actually there because we don't call, want to call the api if there is no search text value that means if the input is empty we don't want to call the api right so that is what we are going to implement here so let's call the method of uh, call api uh, it will be a simple axios call but yeah call api cool we can pass in the value as well uh, which will be search text now what we're going to do is we're going to install axios first to basically call our api and i believe the question has the api for us so this is the api that these guys have given and now i can go ahead and plug these values so axios.get to call an api we use this function and we'll import it now we have the values right here so we can go ahead and plug in our value which will be the search text and then let's console log the results for now and if there are any errors we are going to catch them with errors so so this becomes our boilerplate code let's see if that works so if the search text is there call api gets called call api essentially calls an axios request that is an api call to the backend and once we have our result we'll have our results on the console so let's see if that works so we're getting the response from the server which is like five calls which we don't want what we essentially want is when i stop typing let's say india completely only the last call gets made so we get data as this right so essentially if i try to console log just countries rest dot data countries this is what i'm expecting so now we have our data getting from the back end from from the api essentially now what we want to do is we don't want this first of all i'll go ahead and remove this we don't want the result five times we want the result only when the user stop typing for at least let's say 500 milliseconds in that case we are going to debounce this request so what debouncing is as we talked in the earlier uh, part of this video debouncing is nothing but delaying the api call when the user stops typing so let's create a debounce function so our final function should look like this uh, debounced api call will be equal to debounce and it should take a function let's say call api function and the value will be passed inside of it which will be the search text and this will be called in 500 milliseconds so this is the function that we need to call as and when a the api call is made to the server so let's call it debounce and it will essentially take two arguments so one will be the callback function which is this in this case and the other part will be the time or let's call it debounced time and we'll default it to let's say 500 milliseconds now this has to return a function because this accepts a returned value so we are going to return a function and how we are going to debounce is we are going to use set timeout for debouncing so set timeout is nothing but calling a function after a certain amount of time has passed and for that we'll declare a variable called timer and we'll return a function from this function uh, which will basically be a set timeout and we are going to assign it to the variable timer so that we can later on you'll you'll see the use of it later on and we call it debounced time so we are going to use apply for this because we want to call this function with the context it was provided with so we are going to pass this as the context and the arguments whichever arguments were supplied to this so that essentially applies all the arguments and call this callback function so this is basically it and there's a problem with this and we'll see what the problem is but for that we need to actually create this function 
called debounced API call and we'll wrap this and again here it doesn't have to be called API it has to be debounced API call which will be passed search text here and since debounce I think we have to move it down a bit cool so now we have our function but it won't work and I'll tell you the reason why so since we typed in here, we're getting all the five results which starts from I, I, N, I, N, D, I, N, D, I, and I, N, D, I, A. That is not the thing which we wanted. We want the actual debouncing and we want just this result, the last one. So what's the problem here? So the problem here is uh, we are not basically clearing the timeout here. Since we have all the timer values and it's wrapped in our own context, and the timer value gets executed as and when it stops. So if there is a timer value before we call the next one, uh, we need to clear the timeout. So good rule of thumb is clear timeout as the first statement. And it still won't work, but this helps uh, in native JavaScript. But in React, we have to use one additional feature to make it work. Let's see if that works or not. Again, didn't work. We didn't get the last result. We want we we are getting all the five results. So in that case, uh, use callback would be useful because every time this debounce function is called, it creates its own context and whole of this gets created every time the API call is made. So what we'll do is we'll wrap this in a use callback hook, and we are good to go from there. Uh, just a second. Yep. So now if we see we are getting only one result which was required so now it is 500 let's make it 100 and see if that works so it's a little faster if you see we got two results because it's just 100 milliseconds so let's keep it to 1000 for now yeah we are getting the result after one minute so yeah now the debouncing method is actually done so this is what debouncing is. The next part is actually displaying the data as a list and that is completely tailwind related. So let's go ahead and implement that. So if we have, let's say, IND, we need to show this little box, right? So let's go ahead and create that. For that, I'm going to use a div. And again, it will be max width small, rounded MD. Um, one second and bg white and empty let's say four cool and height will be 40 your flow will be auto makes sense right okay so what i can do is i can create another state variable for this and actually set it to max height instead of height so that it is only visible when there is data so now we are going to create a set of countries let's say countries set countries and we'll initialize it with an empty array and at the bottom we'll have a list we are going to map over that list and if at all we have countries we are going to display a list of countries so for that we'll use map and we are just going to have a p tag which will say the country or let's call it country cool and the key will be for now let's say country itself cool we don't need this idx that's okay cool so now uh, what we're going to do is we basically are going to set the result of this api to our state variable which is countries through set countries so instead of just console logging i'll just do this with list.data.countries once we have that i think we should see some results and for that first we need to check for a conditional so let's quickly create the error boundaries for this we only want to show it if there are countries so what we'll do is we'll have a simple null check we'll call it countries dot length greater than zero do something else do nothing cool so now Let's see if we are getting something. Okay, we got our results. What we can do is we can have a little padding around it and we can call it P4 and divide Y. 
Cool. So let's quickly go ahead and uh, let's get the let's get the padding here. Okay. So let's try it again. Okay, we're getting the results after one second. Now, if we make it 300 milliseconds, uh, we'll get the results after 300 milliseconds. So that is that is how you implement debouncing in a React environment. One thing to keep in mind is if you're doing, using native JavaScript, you don't have to use this use callback hook to essentially uh, memoize the results of the API. And if you're using Re React, uh, you'll definitely have to use this use callback hook hook which is kind of a trick here to make the debouncing work but you don't have to actually implement this in a real world job interview i mean a real world job because you have got low dash and low dash has a really good debounce function implementation with a lot more edge cases essentially it is this but yeah you can always go ahead and create it from scratch so this was the question on debouncing uh, solution is also given on an algochon website which is a little different from what we coded and they follow a more different approach but yeah so that is it for this video and i'll see you in the next one